Hey all you amazing friends, today we are going to do some really simple paper weaving. If you've never woven paper before, I'm going to show you how to do it today. All you really need are some colored sheets of paper and a scissors. Remember, if you don't have different colored sheets of paper, make your own. You can use a crayon or something to make two papers very different from each other. Once you have your supplies gathered, then I'm going to show you the best way to get started with some really simple basic paper weaving. Now, let's start with our mantra so we are ready for art today. Here we go. My mantra, I am positive, I am creative, I am mindful, I am amazing, I am an artist. Okay, I'm ready to weave. What about you? Let's get started. All right, friends, the first thing you wanna do when you start to make your paper weaving is to pick a paper that's going to be your warp. A warp is basically like a loom when you weave, it's what you weave into. So I've chosen my blue background and I'm gonna start by folding it in half like a card. After I have it folded, then I'm gonna cut from the fold to the edge with a few slices, but not all the way off so I have a bunch of little pieces, but so it all stays together as one main piece of paper. What you can do is if you've never woven before and you wanna keep your weaving kind of simple make your lines really far away from each other so maybe you only cut four cuts or five cuts if you want to get a little more advanced make a lot of little cuts knowing that you'll have way more intricate designs to repeat with your patterns you can also technically cut a little bit of a wiggly line or a zigzag line but remember don't cut all the way to the end just stop near the outside edge if you like to mark it by making a little line that might be kind of helpful too so that you can see don't cut farther than that. So I'm just going to cut a few lines first just to get started like this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. After you have your lines cut, when you open it up, you should be able to see that no pieces are going to fall apart, but that you've got a place where you could weave paper strips in between. Now for your paper strips, you're just going to cut smaller sheets of paper that are either wiggly edge or straight edge, and then I'm gonna show you the basic pattern of how to weave across a piece of paper. I've made both thick and thin strips of multiple colors, but you can go as simple as you want and just use one colored paper, make them all the same size. Remember, as the artist, it's your choice about what you want your artwork to look like. Now, to start the pattern, you're gonna begin with one strip of paper and start by practicing the pattern over, under, over, under. So I'm starting over this end piece, and I'm gonna slide my little piece of, it's called weft, or the thing that I'm weaving into, um, and I'm gonna slide that across so I continue my pattern of over, over, under, over, under, all the way till I get to the end. Then I'm gonna slide it up to the top of my weaving here so that I know there's no pieces kind of hanging off the edge. Then I can practice a new pattern, but the thing is when you start this next line, I want you to make sure that you actually create a pattern with the edge, meaning this pink one started over the blue, so the yellow one needs to start under the blue and go opposite. So under, over, under, over and I'm gonna keep going with this pattern so that my strips start to make a checkerboard. After they make a checkerboard, I can now get a little bit more complicated and add things like my smaller strips or do some other kind of designs, maybe draw on top of it. But as the artist, your basic weaving that you're doing is basically just to continue that pattern of over, under, over, under, and make sure that each time you start your weaving, you are going opposite from how you just wove the last strip. So not on top again, but underneath so that it is opposite. Let's check it out in fast motion. Once you have everything woven, then you can decide if you want to add any extra embellishments. So long sheets of paper can actually be woven underneath some of the other ones and just slide right up the top till you have a more complex weaving. You can also weave in things like yarn or shoelaces or any other materials that you could find 
to make your weaving a little bit more interesting. So let's check out how you can add a little bit of glue to it to make your weaving slightly more structurally sound. So if you wanna do yarn, the yarn trick is just to slide it underneath in the same way. But to glue your weaving together so that it's going to stay as one piece, if you flip it over to the back, which still kind of looks like the front, all you need to do is just glue underneath these little tabs along the edge. And that will secure your um, weft pieces so that they do not go sliding back and forth. Once they're secured down, then your weaving looks awesome and you can decide if there's any more embellishments or details that you want to add to your weaving. Now that you know how to make a basic paper weaving, you can embellish it so it looks super awesome and add some different details to it. I'm also gonna challenge you to use your paper weaving as a placemat tonight for dinner. Sometimes it's fun to make a piece of art that's also functional, meaning that you use it instead of just looking at it. Now, we're going to end our art today with a little bit of meditation, and this one has to do with kind of counting and also using your body like percussion. So still keeping that same motion of one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly, but this time as you're breathing slowly, you're gonna focus on your hand making 10 tapping motions with one finger, 10 tapping motions with two, with three, with four, and then all five. So by the end, you've done 10 taps times five, which is 50, and then we'll be able to kind of practice that percussive repetition. Okay, so here we go, slow deep breaths, and then you can start tapping along with me. fun for me. It distracts my brain a little bit and also has me focus on something that's a more interesting task. Now, I want you to challenge yourself to keep creating and we will see you next time.